It's sick, it's sick, it's sick. We got Mike Curzon, but Luka Doncic might be forced to do something drastic. A quarter on the mouse. Now it's Gilgis Alexander, and that's a three-point play opportunity for him. Luka's yelling at you to play defense, bro. Luka, you don't play no defense whatsoever, so I don't know why you're yelling at him. <laughs> that's what you get. Oh, you have a right to be a set. He have a right to be a set that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't throw the ball away. <laughs> Luca, you can't do nothing. Yeah, Can you do it is a question. Yo, like so Luca's a bad teammate. Far too often. When we look at young stars such as Zion Williamson and John Moran, their franchises have surrounded them with some of the best young cores in the NBA, while Luka? Well, it has been five seasons now, and the Mavericks still do not have a second star for him. The team and roster they have in place is far from perfect, and when you consider all of the decisions that have already been made since Luka Doncic has joined the Dallas Mavericks, we have to- Bro, Luka asked for a trade. Mark Cuban is going to go crazy, bro. Their current roster Mark Cuban might just retire, bro. Luka- Luca asked for a trade. My, Mark Cuban might just retire, man. Because are the Mavericks actually going to waste their championship window with, on paper, possibly the greatest young player we have ever actually seen? In the past, we watched as LeBron James spent his first seven seasons with the Cavaliers and then moved on from a failing roster. We saw Kevin Durant get outpaced by Steph Curry as OKC's front office refused to sign any kind of good three-point shooter. Meanwhile, right now, Luka Doncic is averaging averaging over 34 points per game in one of the most dominating young campaigns we have seen to start a season. <laughs> season into account, we have over a 100 game sample size, and in those 100 games, Luka would join this elite list of the only eight players to average at least 29 points per game between the ages of 22 and 23. But here is the most interesting it's easy thing. to average 20 points in NBA, 25 game. points. Let's say five rebounds per game as well. The only man removed from this list is a guard, Michael Jordan. However, if we instead took away five rebounds per game and added five assists per game, we would be left with just two players. As right now, Luka Doncic is on pace to become the first player to achieve this feat, averaging 29 points and five assists per game between the ages of 22 and 23 in the last 60 years. So if the Mavericks do not get a real championship court around this man and he leaves, it will be one of the biggest wastes of young talent we have ever seen. With all of this said though, here's the thing. There is a Bradley much, Bill? much more important storyline going on and that is that if the Mavericks never get this figured out, Luka Doncic could already get eliminated from the GOAT race or at the very least, he might have to climb a now he dipped on Drew Holiday? impossible mountain. So what's up guys, Mike here. And the last thing I want to do is dipped on Drew Holiday? from any GOAT no! race. So what I'm really saying is there should be a fire. You got the least athletic player in NBA history dunk on you. Dallas Mavericks... But to get them to improve while they have Jason the young Kidd. go, they need to get Luca a better core here, and they need to do it fast. There is no time to wait around and to show you what I mean. Let me hit you with this question. What if LeBron James never passed Michael Jordan in the GOAT race due to the fact that the Cleveland you did on Derrick Rose? You have to show this highlight, man. screwed up when they had baby Bron for seven seasons. But before we continue, guys, I am very excited to see... <laughs> We of course know that LeBron James would go on to have tremendous success in a team sense after these first seven seasons, but LeBron was forced to go make a super team in Miami. That was not his first choice. Due to the mistakes of the Cavaliers front office at the time, LeBron himself was given an almost impossible- Charlotte had different colors back then? Someone such as- Damn LeBron's old. Kobe Bryant or Steph Curry. Those three superstars benefited heavily from immediately playing with- Dude got a cigarette in his hand? They allow cigarettes in the crowd? Benefited heavily. 
I know that a lot of cigars in the crowd. From a media so you can be in the crowd watching an NBA game and with the cigar. With live and in person, bro. Offices. Tim Duncan's team had David Robinson on it, and they would go on to bring in Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, and then later on, bring in Kawhi Leonard. Kobe and the Lakers, well, he was drafted when his front office was already bringing in Shaq, and then nobody would say that the Shaq and Kobe Lakers did not have tons of talent. From there, the Lakers were also able to completely rebuild around Kobe and win an additional two titles with Pau Gasol. And then, of course, currently Steph Curry. Well, the Warriors front office has not been able to miss. But then, uh, look at what happened to LeBron James, who only made a slash got swept in the NBA Finals once in his first stint with the Cavaliers. Because while Dwayne Wade's front office was getting him guys like Shaquille O'Neal, the Cavaliers would begin the LeBron James era with one of the craziest NBA free agent stories we have ever seen. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, it is 2023, and my goal on this Why does Shaq want to play with D-Wade in 2004 and not LeBron? There's 2 million subscribers. That means- Yeah, I wanted to go to Miami. I saw this kid in the playoffs. I saw this rookie in the playoffs. We ain't run rookie of the year. Why come you want to play with the rookie of the year? Quality. If you are liking this one, I'm going to be making videos exactly like this or better, I promise you. So make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss a single one. As headed into the 2004 offseason, second round pick and future NBA All-Star Carlos Boozer had severely outperformed his contract. Boozer played for the Cavaliers? 15.5 points and 11.4 rebounds per game in just his I thought he just played for the Jazz and Bulls. As the story goes, and one. the scenes, the Cavaliers made a handshake deal Get in there. In which the Cavs agreed to decline Carlos Boozer's option and then sign him long term for $41 million over six seasons. The problem Break. was that the Utah Jazz came in with a $68 million counter offer that Carlos Boozer accepted. The Cavaliers owner would say, I believed in Carlos, while Boozer says no handshake deal was made. Regardless of who was right, the Cavaliers office bumbled away a two-time all star already tying a hand behind LeBron's back as LeBron would say it's a hell of a blow and it was in the 2006 playoffs the Cavs would lose to the Pistons in the Eastern Conference semifinals in seven here's one thing you need to do Mark was gonna be on my online shopping tools com games as the second leading scorer on the team behind LeBron was Zudrunas Ilgauskas with just Ilgauskas out from him and Verjav it was the two centers LeBron was carrying Bruiser there was the three best players right there missed. and booby gibson and then remember the booby of one of the top free agents in 2005 as the 2005 free agent shooting guard class gave us incredible players such as michael red who would average a combined y'all know about michael red you little deadly bops know nothing about michael red yeah i'm born in 2000 teens 2020 i don't know nothing about michael red He's one of the greatest Milwaukee Bucks of all time. Game between 2005 and 2008. And Ray Allen, a future Hall of Fame legend who was in his prime. The Cavs also could have pursued Joe Johnson, who would go on to become a multiple-time All-Star with the Atlanta Hawks. Joe but instead, that Cleveland would destroy their cap space by signing Larry Hughes, who would average just 15.5 points per game on 41 Not good enough. the very next season as the highest paid player on the team. And we've already mentioned a possible Higher than LeBron? better run for LeBron in 2006, but how about in 2008 when the Cavs lost in seven games to the eventual NBA champion Boston Celtics? And who was it who iced game seven of this series? None other than Ray Allen. Are you actually kidding me? It also needs to be mentioned that the Cavaliers got straight up unlucky as the number six pick in the draft right before LeBron James was Dewan Wagner, who would suffer an extremely serious health condition and was forced to retire. So a bit of bad luck, but more in Importantly, those two massive mistakes shaped all of the Cavaliers' decisions going forward. After those mistakes and those playoff failures, they tried desperately to play catch up. They signed too many older stars, they traded away too many draft picks, and suddenly their roster had no and they got an old Shaq. All they did was sign an old Shaq. Familiar. And looking no. at the Dallas Mavericks, we can start to see. They got Westbrook. That's parallels. the difference. Dallas went all in on a Kristaps Porzingis trade, and that did not work at all. For whatever reason, uh, the chemistry was just not there. But more importantly, the trade return that Dallas got when they shipped out Porzingis was just not nearly... Yo, imagine Jokic and Luka's on the... Imagine Jokic and Luka on the same team, bro. You think they win it all? We're getting with shooters around them? In Porzingis. That is especially not good when you consider the current state of the Dallas Mavericks roster. They do not have a young player that looks like he can grow into a second option. They do not have the trade assets to go out and get a second option. And they currently do not have the cap space to sign a second 
second option. Meanwhile, for our second example as to what an incompetent front office can do to you. Looking at Kevin Durant, it's easy and justifiable to bury the Thunder for trading away James Harden. However, the Thunder did still have two MVPs after this happened, which means the real atrocity that took place here was that somehow the Thunder were never able to surround these two stars with a shooting. In the 2010 yeah. playoffs, the Thunder would shoot five for 19 from three in an elimination at game six as this also happened. You gotta double him, you cannot leave him one on one. Brian for the lead, misses Gasol. Can't get a rebound. They can't get a rebound. Finds Westbrook, puts it up at the buzzer. He got Westbrook. Oh, he missed. For this Dang it. against the Lakers, OKC shot under 30% from three. So you'd think the front office would fix this problem. Only with the 2011 playoffs wide open, the Thunder found themselves matched up against the eventual NBA champs, the Dallas Mavericks in the 2011 Western Conference Finals, where Dallas would make 38 threes. Bro, what else to do with starting over Harden, bro? No, I'll, bro, on 2K, I'll change that every time. Except for, look, you come off the bench, buddy. Okay, see what no, Suffer Losha started over Harden, bro. Shoot even worse from three that playoff series. And he didn't want to give him no money. Only twenty-seven and a half percent of their shots from three. The idea to the Heat paid Tyler Hero. He won six man a year. Rocking the Jew. Durant and Russell Westbrook shooting around them was not exactly rocket science. Everyone knew it needed to be done, but the Thunder just couldn't do it. The 2014 Spurs made twenty more threes than the Thunder and shot almost ten percent better, forty percent to thirty percent in the two. 2014 Western Conference Finals as the Spurs won in six games. And then, of course, in the 2016 Western Conference Finals, that is three Western Conference Finals if you're counting at home, the Golden State Warriors were the blueprint at this point, so they, of course, shot tremendously better than the Thunder. Now, to me, this raises the question, what should this all mean for Kevin Durant? No, I want to talk about 2016. Because at this point, it seems like people have fully agreed that it is LeBron James 1 and Steph Curry 2 for the best player of the 2000s. Yeah, Matt Barnes? But as you just Hey, didn't Matt Barnes play for every NBA team? A few more high level shooters. Sean Livingston played play for the Nets. Kyle Singler, KD could have easily had another title or two, and he could have done it with the team that drafted him. That would have been a huge legacy changer. And we have to be honest with ourselves. A player is not in control of his career early on. That is a scary thought. Real legacies can be changed here. Real legacies have been changed here. I just hope the Dallas Mavericks are able to get Luka Doncic more help before they become another example of what could have been. Please, for Luca, for all of us, get him some help. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That would be awesome. We have a ton of incredible ideas, trust me, coming up. I am very excited to show you what we have in store. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day, guys, and cue that music. If you're